Hey, what is up guys? I'm KBHD here and welcome to some of the first impressions of one of the first flagship smartphones of 2017. That's the LG G6. Uh, successor to the G5 pretty much just in the name because everything else is completely different. There is a bunch of new stuff with this phone. I mean, you can see that just by looking at it, but this is gonna be my top five. So top five best new features of the G6, and I'm gonna put them in order. So enough of this order doesn't matter stuff. I'm gonna tell you exactly where I think things rank as the best new features of this phone. Let's get started. So number five is the software. The G6 is still rocking an LG software skin, but it is a much improved, way less in your face version of it. So it's still very LG with no app drawer and the skinned apps and icons and things and a very colorful look but it's not too crazy and I'd say it's an improvement over what we had on the G5 and G4 and previous phones. It's built on top of Android 7.1 Nougat, which means first of all, you do get Google Assistant baked in now as you do with any Nougat phone. And it means you get a couple other features that are built into LG's skin that you wouldn't get in pure stock Android that you'd have on the Pixel phone. There's always a balance of shoving new features in your face, which is kind of like what Samsung might do, versus sort of tucking the features away in the settings app and letting you find them later. And I think this skin does a pretty good job of balancing those two things. But of course, it's not perfect. As a skin phone, you kind of have inherently a little bit of a delay as far as software updates go. Of course, we hope it gets lots of software updates very quickly, but there's no guarantees. And also, of course, you kind of have to deal with LG's reputation. Lately, it's been a little bit shaky as far as stability goes, but we'll see. So number four is the specs. This is the part where I spit a bunch of numbers and letters at you that are both higher and better than the numbers and letters from last year. So 2.3 gigahertz Snapdragon 821 chip with the Adreno 530 GPU, four gigabytes of RAM, 32 gigs of storage is great. You have the twin 13 megapixel cameras on the back and a 3,300 milliamp hour battery. And it's IP68 water resistant. That on top of Qi enabled wireless charging and it still has a micro SD card slot. So up to two terabytes of expandable storage. So the numbers and the specs on paper, of course, look great as you'd expect from a flagship Android phone in 2017. We don't have a price yet, so it's kind of hard to place this in the bang for the buck category, but obviously it looks really good and there's no real flaws here. But of course, again, it's not quite perfect. Uh, in the US version, you're actually not getting a quad DAC. You're getting a pretty average DAC. Instead, you're getting a couple extra radios, which I, again, it's a different consumer in a different region. But you're also not getting a Snapdragon 835 chip, obviously, in this phone. That's another bleeding edge high-end chip that you'll probably see in phones as soon as a month from now, like the Galaxy S8 in March. Now, that's not to say that the Snapdragon 821 is way worse or that it can't hang. It's just that's what you get for putting out a phone a little bit early in the year is you don't get the brand new silicon that just sort of comes out after you put your phone out. So later phones will have the Snapdragon 835. 821 is still really good, but, you know, not perfect. So number three is the dual cameras on the back. Last year, the G5 had a very obviously primary 16 megapixel portrait camera and a very obviously secondary lower resolution super wide angle camera just for fun. This year, the G6 gets twin 13 megapixel sensors behind your standard and 120 degree wide angle lenses. So now when you're switching back and forth between the portrait lens and the super wide angle lens, it's not as big of a glaring difference in quality before you could really tell when a photo was with the other camera. Now you'll just sort of be able to glide between the two and not get a huge drop off. And I think that's the kind of thing that will encourage people to use this super wide angle camera a lot more. It was a pretty cool feature to see in the G5. They're carrying it over to the G6 and I'm happy it's there. But it's not, it's, it's not perfect because obviously, okay, no camera is perfect, but also because I've had some stability issues in this first bit of use. But I can't look too far into that because this is a pre-production unit with pre-production software. So I can pretty much guarantee that this and any other problem I come across in the software will be fixed by the time this goes on sale. So the number two best feature in the G6 is the design. The design of the G6 is completely new. It's ditched the modular nature of the G5 for a much more, you could say, traditional premium smartphone design. So just metal and glass everywhere. It still has the volume buttons on the side, which I really like, and it keeps the trademarked and loved LG power button and fingerprint reader on the back, which also happens to complete this face that you can see it making. I mean, you do see it, right? And honestly, the robot face kind of matches because this phone has a very robotic, squared up look. Like there's no unnecessary tapers to try to make it feel thinner or look thinner. There's no fancy edge display bleeding over the edge with curved glass. None of that crazy fancy stuff. It's just very business-like and all the way around. And I kind of like that. Or maybe it's because I've been using the Pixel too much. I don't know. It's Gorilla Glass on the front and back. And this thing is obviously waterproof, like we mentioned earlier. So IP68 means it can survive if you get caught in the rain or you drop your phone in a puddle or a shower or something. Uh, it does all this while keeping USB Type-C. It keeps the headphone jack. 
it keeps the expandable storage with a micro SD card slot. So with all that, I don't mind it being a little bit thicker in the hand because the footprint is definitely manageable. But as you could probably guess, it's not perfect. Uh, you could say that you would have liked to have had a removable battery like we had with the G5. You don't get that. It's not a huge deal, but that's something to note. And also the single downward facing speaker is not the best part of this phone at all. And that's something that I've noted with a lot of previous flagships, but obviously the ones that focus on the speaker get to do it a lot better than this. So not perfect. So that brings us to number one, the best feature of the G6, which is right up here at the front, and that's the display. The screen is obviously the main attraction here. It's a 5.7 inch IPS LCD display with an 18 by nine aspect ratio, which is, you know, two by one. I know my fractions. So the display is a little taller or a little wider sideways than your normal 16 by nine display. It's a 2880 by 1440 resolution. Now apps and wallpapers and icons and everything still work perfectly normally, but you do get a couple software features to take advantage of the larger display. App multitasking, for example, works a bit better now that you have that extra bit of room. I mean, it's essentially two square windows now, top to bottom or side by side, and more apps are compatible with it thanks to Android Nougat. And on top of just being a little bit longer, it's obviously still a great display, as you can tell. It gets super bright, up to 600 nits, so very viewable outdoors. Supports HDR and is very proud of it, giving very deep blacks for an LCD and great saturation. And the curved corners are just icing on the crispy G6 cake. I mean, I could go either way on curved corners versus square, but I think they look kind of cool, so I don't mind it. And this thinness of the bezels is really what LG's been hyping up and what people looking at this phone will hype up because it's not just the side bezels, which are obviously tiny, but it's the forehead and the chin, the top and bottom bezels they get super compact too. So these thin bezels all the way around the display let a phone with a 5.7 inch screen fit in the footprint of a much smaller phone, which is legitimately useful again. But then again, you can say it with me again, it's not perfect. Anytime you're watching a 16 by nine video, it becomes obvious you're gonna see these bars along the side and people get used to seeing these bars along watching most videos, but if you watch an 18 by nine or two by one video, the bars go away and it looks way better. And also obviously smaller bezels make this phone a lot less protected and more prone to cracking or breaking if you were to drop it, especially if you don't have a case on it, which like me is how I roll with every phone. So that's just something I'm willing to deal with. So that's the G6 in a first impressions nutshell. Things like performance and battery life and the camera, these will all be thoroughly tested and that's the kind of stuff I'll go over with you in the full review of this phone when this thing finally comes out with a price and a release date. But until then, that's, uh, that's what to know about it. You can look at the G6 as pretty much a super safe bet, but in a good way. Like it seems to stack up well against what we're expecting from things like the Galaxy S8 and phones coming out later this year. But again, those will have to come out and we'll look at that comparison when we get to it. So either way, what do you think of this phone? Would you grab a G6? Let me know. Thanks for watching. Talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.